Mi gente, what's good? My name is DJ Integrity. I am the host of Mix Mondays. And what you're about to see is a recap of a past interview that we have done on Twitch. Make sure that you're following us there, Oxen Brand Music. And then also like and subscribe for more content like this. Dale. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Make some noise for my dude, George Rose. You just got done being able uh, to to perform with him and, and several others, but before we get into that, I don't want to I want to I want to jump the gun a little bit too much. Gotcha. Let's go ahead and for those who um, for those who are watching on the replay on YouTube on whatever other platform, uh, if they don't know who George Rose is, tell them about yourself, man. Man, my name is George Rose. Uh, I live in Kentucky. Artist, producer, writer. Some of you might have heard my tag. Hey, ooh, G Rose. If you ever hear that, that is me. That means I produced it. Uh, I've produced for, man, I've worked with Reach. Uh, I mean, Hovey, Wande, Miles Minnick. I mean, the list, Jerry Sanders. I mean, it just, pretty much in every Christian camp, there's a G Rose tag, like God Over Money, Reach. Um, yeah, so that's just you know the name of few, you know what I'm saying? So yo, yeah, just, just yeah. the name of a little few, just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, so I agree, I agree. Cole, uh, Cole in the chat right now, he's like, who doesn't know who George Rose is? Man, I appreciate that, man. It's been a lot of hard work, uh, but it ain't done. It ain't done. You know what I'm saying? We be nah, right man, here, up here, man. And the thing is, is that just like anybody else, right? Um, like you come up on the scene and all of a sudden you are everywhere. Like exactly mm -hmm. who you just listed. You just listed a whole bunch of artists and others that you have in as well. And it's just like, it, it, in my, just, just for, you know, outside looking in or whatever. Yeah. For me, it was like literally by the time I stumbled onto you, I was like, yo, I feel super late because now I hear him everywhere. Like, where? how did I miss this thing? How did you just come up on the scene? What it looks like to be obviously out of nowhere, but of course our chat knows that there's always a lot of behind the scenes, yeah. many years of grinding and all that. So yeah. how did you all of a sudden just come up out of nowhere in, in other people's eyes and then just almost kind of take over CHH for, for a good minute and still continuing to do so? Bruh, uh, just consistency, um, just relationships, building relationships. So I've been in Christian hip hop, CHH, uh, for I think a solid three years. Um, like before wow. that, I was in, uh, this is what us Christians call worldly. I was in the secular world, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I was in the secular. I literally had, before I left the secular industry, uh, I had beats that was going to Cardi B. I was literally right when God had me transition out. I was in the process of working with Trippy Red. I was able to take everything I learned being in the mainstream, you know, which is I feel like is a, a way bigger platform. You know, if you learn how to maneuver in that industry, it was kind of like and I don't mean this in an arrogant way. But it was kind of like a, a piece of cake when I was able to transition to Christian hip hop because it's a lot mm. smaller. Right, right, uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> Meaning, you know, you literally meet this one person and then that person knows the next person. And so I just took that hustle and drive that I had and just continued it, you know. Um, and I, I think the biggest thing was just treating people well, grinding and understanding. Even though I had been working with, you know, uh, <clears throat> those big artists, I was starting from scratch. So I had, I had to literally start all over again. But I didn't I didn't mind it. Right. No, I get it. I get it. So yeah, so you already you already had some experience under your belt. You kind mm -hmm. of already kind of understood industry as a whole yeah. and kind of certain similarities I'm sure um that you were able to obviously carry over into the yes. CHH and not and I mean I, that 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 makes knowing that actually even just for me knowing that that actually makes um a lot more sense because it, it is so mm -hmm. much again you come up on the scene and then all of a sudden um not only are you all over the place but then a mm -hmm. lot of it also seems very strategic not to say strategic no, by I'm, the way I'm very strict bro I'm very strategic I'm a strategic guy yeah and so and so not to say so for the for those who are listening uh when I say st strategic that doesn't mm -hmm. Strategic and, and um, being relational are not two separate things. Yes, yeah. there are people who definitely um, yeah. do one better than the other or they, they, mm. they don't know how to merge the two. Um, I can definitely say, again, outside looking in, that not only was it strategic, but it looked like you were building authentic yes. relationships as well, where it's like, oh. no, this dude is not just coming in to work to yes. get this check. He's trying to actually like do life with people. Was that Most a fair assessment? Most definitely, man. Uh, that's pretty much the key. Uh, 
and and to piggyback off what you said, you know, strategic meaning knowing what situations to put yourself in and really knowing how to love people. That's that's what I mean by strategic, how to love people. Man, no, nah, that's good. That's good. And the thing is, so um, so some some people who have uh, been here in my chat for a while, and you guys definitely know the story a little bit, but uh, actually when uh, 116 was here recently, uh, mm -hmm. my guy Cole and I, we actually were at the show, um, and I ran into you for the first time. Yeah. And talk about authentic, uh, just for, again, for those of you guys who weren't here on other streams where I talked about it, one of the things that really took me away, it, and so... I don't get starstruck. I can really care less whose name is what. Like, it's, you know, we're all human beings, okay, right? We're all image bearers. So um, that means nothing to me. But what does mean a whole lot to me is when somebody takes the time to um, acknowledge and recognize someone else when, when it's possible, right? Like, somebody commenting one time does not mean yeah. all of a sudden you're going to know who they are. But yeah. Uh, yeah. for me, I can say uh, to you here, you know, face to face is that yeah. – um, I was very appreciative that, uh, you know, you're walking by, you're, you're focused, you're doing your own thing or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, real quick, I was able to get your attention and you yeah. recognized. And so what I thought that was really dope, I was like, yo, this guy is down to earth enough to yeah. not just even recognize, but then to take the time, you know, to, to chop it up real quick. And again, yeah. I know you were focused and got a chance to kind of see you like I was I just got out the cypher then you came in yeah. there's a little dance cypher going on and you came in and did your thing that yeah. was that yeah. was really a, a really dope moment for me to to see man. that personal part of you I appreciate that man and um I love people man and um what we artists um have to understand is we're nothing without you guys <clears throat> the platforms people who support us uh <clears throat> like you're nothing without everyone on this uh, stream right now. And right. a lot of times, you know, we can forget that. Yeah, super easy, and, super easy. You get you get complacent, right? You start to almost become entitled. Uh, yeah, and we're Christians, dog. Like, I, I get we all, you know, we struggle with pride and all that. That's for everyone. But at the same time, you have to understand, like, are you an artist first or are you a Christ follower first? And sometimes those two can conflict. Sometimes you got to... <laughs> You know, you'll get into a situation and you really have to be like, ah, okay, God, what are you really, Holy Spirit, what are you telling me to do right now? What it, it on paper just don't look like it makes sense, but does it make sense for you? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, so put that in perspective. So, okay, so you got, um, you got a brand like us, Oxen Brain Music, right? Yeah. Um, small guys kind of coming in, um, but I, but, what ends up happening and what we notice, and, and I know that you kind of got to like build and all that whatnot. Uh, but what I notice is that some people, and, and, and this is not us by any means, we definitely understand the bigger uh, uh, picture, but some people have this mentality where um, just because you're doing something for the Lord, when you're doing something for the Lord, that all of a sudden everybody's got to team up with you. And if they don't, then they don't really love Jesus. They don't, they're not about it. They're just business minded and all that. How do you, as, a, as an artist, um, have you actually ever encountered uh, that kind of conversation where somebody um, almost assumes that just because they, you and them are doing Christian things, that you ought to be working with them. Have you experienced that at all? What I've learned and with working with, you know, bigger artists is understanding the, their time. Like it has nothing to do with, hey man, uh, you know, I have people come up to me, hey, let's work. And, you know, I, and I love to talk, you know, to them, but sometimes it's like, I don't have, and I'm getting better with letting people know like, hey, I would love to work with you, but right now I can't. Um, yeah. I can give you some advice, you know. Um, yeah, it, it gets difficult because you do you do want to help everybody. But at the same time, you have to value your time because you cannot get time back. And not everybody, you're not supposed to be working with everybody. That's just the truth. Uh, not Amen. The church is not supposed to do everything. No, Ooh. it's imp it's impossible. So many people look at the church. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you have this outreach? Well, my pastor talked. Uh, actually, um, I went to a seminar and uh, learned, you know, this this uh, quick little nugget. You know how people look at the church and how they get mad when they're not doing certain things. Uh, a lot of times, if the church is not doing it, you you go do it. You know what I'm saying? If you sense uh, a need, then go do it. And so, Absolutely. Uh, and so I put that together by saying, like, if you see somebody you really want to work with and you see them and I, I don't like like they're bigger or whatever, but you see them mm. becoming successful, 
and moving a lot. Put yourself in a position to where you're undeniable. Don't get mad because you will get mad. You will get your feelings hurt. But you have to look like if you want to work with, let's just say if you wanted to work with Drake or something, you're not, he don't have the time. Yeah. But, you know, something I did as I was coming up, like, all right, look, I'm going to make myself so dope that you can't deny. You're going to see me everywhere. And and then it gets to a point to where like you, even you, you was like, bro, I'm seeing you everywhere. But that was because of years of just consistent work. So, yeah. It's a little naked I got. Nah, that's, yo, that's, that's excellent right there. Boom, shut it down. That's absolute, that's, a, that's an absolute truth. Okay, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna go to the extreme to say that's an absolute truth. So, okay, so when, when um, churches, right, or Christian, mm -hmm. I should say big church, okay, big church, mm -hmm. right, big C, mm -hmm. um, as much as we uh, are to be unified and um, there should be collaboration, oftentimes we see this, not just in the music realm, but just again, big C in the church, uh, is that everybody kind of tends to do their own thing. Um, why do you feel like, or do you feel like that um, even in the Christian hip hop market, let me, let me backtrack. So not to say that people um, can't make their own sounds or do their own singles or stuff like that, but uh, it seems like those of which who got into the game to say, hey, there are some gatekeepers, um, I don't like that I can't get through to that. I think there's so much more to, for everybody else. So it would be dope to have some kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. But instead, um, there seems to be some gatekeepers. So they get in the game with the right intentions. I would say the heart, you know, is, is at least a good spot, yep. you know, starting out. But then as time goes on and as their platform becomes uh, bigger, they almost slowly turn into a gatekeeper themselves. Mm -hmm. um, how, how could somebody, I guess, process that, that as a church, uh, instead of doing our own thing, we should be better at collaborating. But what ends up happening, at least in the Christian hip hop market or Christian music, I guess, in general, um, is you end up having these gatekeepers. How can somebody process through that or or um, what are your thoughts on something like that? And that's a good question. Um, just do what God called you to do it. You know, just because you can rap don't mean you're supposed to be doing it. It's just the bottom line. Facts. Just because you have a talent don't mean that's your that's what you're supposed to be doing ever or maybe it's not what you're supposed to be doing in that season. So I just want to get that out the way. A lot of people, oh, I think I can do it. You know, oh, did the Holy Spirit, did God tell you to? Are you called to it? You know, right. that's another thing. But as far as the gatekeepers, there's going to be, quote unquote, gatekeepers everywhere you go. You go to corporate America, there's gatekeepers. That's just, yeah. it's just how it works. And you have to shift your, shift your way of thinking. I understand the hurt of feeling left out. I feel like that's kind of like the common theme of Christian hip hop. You know, it's kind of like, hey, I don't feel like I'm in the 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 in crowd. And, you know, our circles, you know, Christian hip hop is already small. So I know there's a lot of hurt and pain. Take that hurt and pain and go make your own door. Go go build your own door. If someone ain't letting you in, go build your own door. Uh, I got to give a shout out to my my my, my brother. Y'all know how close, close I am with Miles. Miles Minnick. Miles is a perfect example of building your own he lives in cali you would think that there's just so many christian hip-hop there's not what did he do he created his own glow nation he created his own movement he created yeah. glowchella he built his own door now he has leverage you know and uh, i feel like just be dope that's that's all i can say just just be so dope at what you do that people cannot deny it yeah so. no absolutely i feel that i feel that also yeah you got some people in the chat definitely agreeing with you right now yeah um so you just talk about glochella all right mm -hmm. let's i so obviously i know we're limited on time and i'm jumping straight into the deep stuff that's just kind of my on, personality man. as well um but you did just bring up glochella man um mm -hmm. how was that man because just i saw the recap today that got dropped and of course you know man. we got other friends out there like jay cash and then kid viz who was yeah. on here last week yeah how was that that whole experience for you bro Man, so me and Miles were talking about Glochella years ago, and um, to see it come to uh, come into play, it was amazing. Um, like I said, you know, Miles is one of my best friends, and uh, it was on the back end. It was amazing. I mean, Miles and his wife Tina did an amazing job. Um, they treated us so well. We felt like royalty, all the artists. 
Um, wow. Man, we got picked up by a chauffeur. We had a, you know what I'm saying? It was, it went, and it wasn't no like, it was like a dope SUV, bro. It was cold. And we stayed in a nice hotel. And uh, the the venue was amazing. The sound, y'all, usually Christian hip hop shows be trash. The sound, <laughs> bro. But this was top notch. The sound was impeccable. The graphics. Um, and I, I will say the, the, the artist that he had on the lineup, if you saw the lineup, he built a relationship with each artist. And all of us knew each other. So when we yeah. got together, I mean, the flow was amazing. And everybody on that list could perform their behinds off. So there was no weak moment of the show. You know how you go to shows and there'd be like one per, you know, a couple people that just stand out. Yep, yep. Nah, this was like a, you know, in a ring full of gladiators going at it. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing, man. So one of the best experiences I've ever had. One, one more, one more question, and then we're gonna get hit. Uh, go ahead and get into uh, the Oxen Spotlight for the evening, because I know uh, yep. you got to go out of town. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, I want to be mindful of that time. But uh, of course, audience, you know, as you guys are uh, tuning in, I, saw, I see a bunch of you guys just now starting to come in as well too. Yep. Um, this is George Rose. Uh, he literally has been everywhere. <laughs> He's Man. been everywhere, uh, especially recently. Uh, doing some stuff with Shepherd Music and just just all all over the place. He's been mm -hmm. all over the place and it's been amazing. So, um, but one of the questions that I wanted to ask uh, before we moved into anything else was when it comes to um, people saying no, right? Just just to kind of keep going on with with the you know just be dope kind of deal. How do you process? Because obviously you didn't just all of a sudden get a bunch of yeses, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there had to have been some nos. So what, did <laughs> what did you do? What did you do to to process those no's and 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 keep it in a positive spin right didn't take anything negative how how was that for you like i still get no's right you have to learn how to process no no matter what now it does it doesn't mean accept the no you just have to learn how to process you know so that's like if somebody told you yeah i don't think this is for you it's a no okay yeah. i'm gonna just go to this door or you could think you could be like, you know what, All right, I'm going to take, you know, if it's legitimate, good criticism, because sometimes a no can be good. I know I don't accept no very well I've, because I'm such a mover. I don't yeah. like no and I don't accept it. What it does, and I don't know if this is right. So it, <laughs> it, it, it angers me. It stresses mm. me out, you know, like and so it makes me go crazier in a sense of. Wow. Oh, okay. You didn't find something you liked? Bet all day tomorrow, literally in the studio. You gonna basically the mentality is you gonna find something you like. Um, that's how I process no. And uh, and then my wife is amazing. Uh, I'll just talk to her, and she'll usually, you know, she always puts me back, you know, because sometimes the no's coming. It, it depends on who the no's coming from too. Uh, can shut you down pretty hard, you know, because what what can happen. A no can have you second guessing yourself. Uh, like I, I open up, I, I looked at a re, uh, what do you call it? A YouTube recap video of somebody like uh, viewing my video and critiquing it. Mm -hmm. I was so used to getting like good reviews, man. I got my first bad review, you know, wow. and they, I mean, they was, you know, uh, and it hurt me, you know, I was like, wow. And it really shook me to the core. Like my wife could tell. And it had me second guessing myself, had me like, wow. and I remember she just, you know, built me back up and I had to remember who I was and remember that not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like your stuff. I know there's artists, everybody likes it. There's artists that everybody likes, but I just like, mm, I can't stand their voice. Fact, same. So if I feel that way, there's going to be people that feel that way about me. The best thing you could do is just love them and respect them for their opinion. No, nah, that's good, bro. That's so, that's so good, man. Thank you. Um, okay, y'all. So uh, again, I say I see some more people kind of tuning in. What's up? Uh, welcome again. This is George Rose. Uh, and if you just got here late, hey, you know that's what happens. I got time for be one on time. more, bro. Give me one more. If you got one more, I got time for you. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So 
So we're talking about, um, again, the nose and everything else. So there, there has to be some kind of struggles that you've gone through, some okay. kind of obstacles that you had to overcome. And uh, again, uh, like what you were talking about earlier, about just being dope and how um, there's gatekeepers in all aspects of life, not just music, mm -hmm. um, even in the business world and everything else. Obviously, there's so many obstacles that you have to overcome. And you just talked about uh, a no. I would say a no is, is an obstacle in and of itself. Mm -hmm. How, or I should say, what kind of obstacles um, have you had to actually overcome, uh, not, not even just as an artist, uh, uh, in life in general? What, what is some of the biggest obstacles that you had to overcome? And then how did you uh, do it in such a way that it's adding fuel to your fire now? Yeah. I, uh, years ago, I was addicted to drugs real bad. Um, and I think it was probably, I, I, I can't put a number, but it was years ago. I was addicted to drugs. Um, me and my wife, we had our son before we had, you know, got married. And, um, and then we got married. Um, uh, but I was addicted to some, some stuff y'all. And I remember, mm -hmm. you know, I knew what I was doing was not right because I grew up in a church. I'm a pastor's kid. And I remember my mom called me one, you know, a couple of times. I remember she called me and the Lord basically told her to tell me that if I didn't stop, I was going to die. And uh, uh, in that moment, I already knew it, it wasn't a surprise. I was addicted to cocaine. And so basically I made the decision. So this is where my transition from the mainstream uh, to Christian hip hop, there's a middle. I basically left music completely to never do it again, never, and go into full time ministry, which is what I did. Me and my wife got into children's ministry um, in Dallas, and then God was like, "Hey, I want you to go back into you know to music, but I want you to do Christian hip hop." And the very first Christian artist I ever worked with was Dayton. Hey, and, Dayton, what's uh, up? Yeah, uh, that's my dog, man. And uh, yeah, so that was a huge obstacle uh, of itself. And I've, I don't think I've told anybody this. People have heard my testimony, but this is the part that got crazy. So when God said I was gonna die, he literally meant death. Because shortly mm. after, li oh God, literally shortly after, cause I lived in Dallas, fentanyl or fentanyl, however you ever said, fentanyl. Yeah, yeah got introduced and people started dying left, right. And so the dealers I was dealing with the stuff, it was only a moment, you know, a matter of time before I would have died. And, uh, wow. and I got out just in time. Uh, that was a huge obstacle that I, I faced. Man. Yo, well, Hey, glory to God. Cause we have all, even here on this stream have been blessed by the music that you've created and, uh, and the content and, and it's and um, yes, the high energy stuff, you know, is all dope and whatnot. But um, we do pay attention to lyrics here. Right. We do <laughs> really genuinely care about it. It, it can sound um, sonically. It can sound dope. But if there's not a lot of meat to it, mm -hmm. uh, even our audience is like, yeah, you know, it's cool. It's, it's a little bop, but, you know, we're not we're not really that interested. And so. Um, yeah, so thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with, with uh, Meow Girl 20 on the, in the chat right now. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing no for sharing that. It's super powerful. Um, well, okay. All right. So, again, I know you got to go out of town. Got time. Come on. Let's get with it, bro. I'm enjoying myself. You, Come on. Good, man. No, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Um, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get into uh, the Oxen Spotlight for tonight, right? It's ad libs. Um, it's been on our countdown several times. Amazing. Uh, and so, yeah, so shout out to the viewers uh, who, uh, you, who've been supporting you here too, man. Thank y'all so uh, much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so take us, take us through because uh, I, we've definitely noticed uh, in some of your music videos, you got like a movie acting type thing, right? You, you definitely uh, into that. Obviously, we know that you're a dancer as well. You dope at it too. Uh, as well, and I'm saying that as a natural born hater with love and grace. Uh, <laughs> and that's I. That's how I cue myself as I'm a natural born hater yeah. with love and grace. Uh, so when I'm like, "Yo, somebody's dope," I like authentically. People tend to really understand, like, "Oh, yeah. he actually likes him." So yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, uh, thank you, real DJ Black. Appreciate that comment, man. Um, so, but anyways, um, 
tell us tell us about yep. uh, ad libs man what was your what was your vision behind it how was it even just shooting it i mean again we see the behind the scene rehearsals and all that tell us about it bro oh man ad libs is very special to me um man i made the song and it was very simple i was like man i want to make a song about ad libs <laughs> and um literally made which the was song. genius by the way i thought it was genius i, I, I was like everybody got ad libs everybody I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I do my best to put word, you know, the word of God into my lyrics, you know, uh, but I wanted to make sure when you hear my music, my goal is to make radio ready music. Um, but to also show people that you can make radio bops that got substance. You know, you don't have to be preachy. I, I like to make my music edible for non-Christians. I feel like a lot of artists, we, the people who do get mad at artists like me who make more of a a sound or a song that could, you know, go crazy out, you know, in the world is, it's like staying inside the church. Why would you just want to preach inside the church? Yeah. The people who already know who Jesus is are, are hearing it Sunday after Sunday and ain't doing nothing. And so uh, with ad libs, I felt like it was a good, happy medium. And then uh, my guy, his name is Fallback Films, a.k.a. Taylor Graves, who shoots a lot of my music videos. And uh, we got together. Um, me and my dancers actually came up with the, the storyline. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, we shot it in one day. And it came out. A masterpiece and i wanted to actually dance too as well in this one yeah 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 no you de you definitely did man you definitely did all right y'all well you guys know what it is we're gonna go ahead and get into this video you guys know what it is we're gonna go ahead and do this uh make sure that you guys show some love in the chat george sees everything that i'm seeing as well so let's go ahead and run it you guys already know what the song is you guys heard it before we're gonna run it from the top if you guys didn't get a chance to see the acting part, we're going to go ahead and let that thing run tonight for our guest. Let's go. Special guest right here, George Rose, ad lib. Hey, bloopers are always fun. Bloopers are always fun. Yo, that thing was fire, Appreciate bro. You. Appreciate y'all. That was fire. Yeah, man. Nah, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, obviously, make sure that you guys are checking it out. And of course, again, everybody in the chat, you guys yeah. are seeing all the different links going up. Make sure you guys hit up those links. That is how you get to uh, George's music. Mm -hmm. You also get uh, to uh, his social medias as yeah. well. Uh, so that make sure you guys are following him on all social media platforms because he's always moving and grooving, y'all. There's, there's always a lot of things going on. Um, but I can say this too. Uh, it's very intentional about you're even very intentional about your post and yes. being able to connect with people as much as yes. you're uh, able to. And honestly, as busy as you are. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for hitting the filter. Appreciate you, Kat. Uh, so we got fun little filters here that the crowd hey. <laughs> engage in. So um, they I, I'm assuming that they wanted to show you that we got a lot of fun stuff here <laughs> on Twitch. Dope. So dope, man. This is it's dope. a different. It's a different vibe uh, for sure. Uh, the real DJ Black said, I enjoyed the vid, George. You got it going on. Man, thank you so much. Thank y'all. Um, I did want to, before I left. Um, yeah. So in July, uh, I am releasing my first, um, actually, yeah, my debut album is releasing in July. So y'all be on the lookout for that. I'm so excited for you uh, guys and ladies to really get to hear my heart on this album. Uh, you're gonna get to really know who George Rose is. And uh, yeah, so I wanna give y'all hey. a uh, sneak peek. Hey, get the exclusive. Y'all already know what it is. Make sure that you guys are stick again that's what i'm saying just follow them just follow links uh -huh. and everybody here you guys know what supporting is supporting um likes and comments and shares that's cool but we know that 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 that's just like the entry level that's just like i just heard about somebody and i kind of like them uh we know what real support is uh any kind of merch that ever comes out the music yeah. that comes out uh the pre-saves right pre-saves are huge um you know everything that you guys uh you guys already know what the deal is make sure you guys support 
the homie George Rose. So, hey, bro, thank you again so much for being on the show. Uh, been an honor to be able to chop it up with you, oh. and I know everybody in the chat been going crazy this whole time, so I haven't been able to actually read everybody's comments. So um, if I did not get to your guys' comments, again, make sure you guys follow them. You guys can ask them uh, your own question, right? Go go ahead and DM them and whatnot yeah. uh, and do that as well. So thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, you. Tell your wife, thank you for allowing us to have you for a little bit longer as well. <laughs> so, Of course. I appreciate y'all. And uh yeah, reach out to me offline, my boy. Uh, I definitely mean you need to swap numbers, and uh, let's get locked in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, bro, man. Take care and uh, safe travels, bro. Thank you. All right, peace. Yo, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Hopefully you found any of this content useful. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe. And of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified for the next time that we upload anything. However, make sure that you're also following us on all of our social media platforms. And of course, we want to see you guys live in the chat in our Twitch. So make sure that you guys are following us there as well. Love you guys. Peace.